Hello and welcome to Class Time, CSEC Math. I am Camille Johnson Borrell. And I am Tamika Lodge Fenton. And today we'll delve into the world of consumer arithmetic with a look at profit, loss, percentages, among others. Let's get started. So Tamika, let's take a look at the objectives for today. Most definitely. So our objectives for today, one, calculate discount, sales tax, profit or loss. Uh -huh. And two, express a profit, loss, discount, markup and purchase tax as a percentage of some value. Sounds good. Mm, what? Consumer arithmetic. Ah, what is consumer arithmetic? Well, the word arithmetic to me means maybe some addition, subtraction, multiplication, some operations in math. Sounds good. What about the consumer part though? Hmm. I so consumer, consumer arithmetic. All right. So consumer, mm -hmm. I may be a consumer. I can buy right. or I can be a merchant. I can sell. So right. buying and selling. All right. So we, we talk the consumer part is when you are buying. Okay. So when you are a part of the buying process and then you did say at our, you know, those, mo those math things, those math operations. Yes. So let us formalize this definition. What is consumer arithmetic? Consumer arithmetic is a field of mathematics which shows you how to use your basic math skills to apply in real life situations, such as buying a car, budgeting your money, investing, paying your taxes, just to name a few things. So you're pretty much got it. I'm know? almost there. You're almost there. Almost that was a good there. look. Almost so there. we all are consumers because we buy things, as you rightfully said. All right. Let us look at some key terms in this consumer arithmetic thing. Though. Yes, because if we're doing consumer arithmetic, we do have some terms that we need to terms. be clear about. So we have cost price. Tell me about that. The amount of money that you pay for an article. Or, or it be a services. Service. Yes. Also referred to as original price or the buying price. That's right. But if we have cost price. We must have. Selling price. There you go. So tell me about selling price. The price that an article or service is sold for. Hmm. Mm. So that means the cost price and is the selling definitely price. not the selling price. No, but there, are there is a relationship. What is that relationship? Here we have it. The selling price could yes. be the cost, cost price, price plus, plus the profit. Now what happened? You tell me. Every business that open, everybody that buy and sell, do they always make a profit? Hmm, no, because sometimes you hear of maybe businesses closing, in, yes, Bankruptcy. closing down and they're just selling out, clear and sell. Right. Could be. So, hmm. so there are times when the selling price talks about a loss, loss, includes a loss. So when the cost price subtracts a loss, we still have a selling price. Now let's be a little bit more practical. What to say you bought that watch? For five hundred dollars, more than five hundred dollars. All right. So you bought it for five hundred dollars, right, US. It. Mm, yes. Right. Yes. Sounds better. And you sold it hmm. for three hundred dollars. I can't sell it for three hundred. I'm going to be at a loss. There I'm you going go. To lose. There you go. So your selling price would have been your cost price for five hundred dollar. Subtract how much money you lost, which would be two hundred dollars. I lost two hundred. There you go. That is how I get the $300 there as my selling you price. Go. Uh, so that means we have to be very mindful. We have to pay attention. Yeah, man, when we're doing when business. we are doing business. In order for us to make sure we experience profit, we have to pay attention to that cost price. Mm -hmm. Now, we must remember, as consumers, though, consumers pay cash price, which would be the selling price of the merchant, the person who is selling, selling. the goods or services. And so we... Mm -hmm. Pay, we really are talking about when we go to buy an item, we are looking at the cash price, which would be the merchant's selling price. All right. Sometimes we refer to it as marked price as or well. Or that, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. But unless we are the merchant, we wouldn't really be looking at the cost, cost price. price. Great. All right. No. We can offer you a big discount, Camille. When you go to a store and you see this, what happens? How do you feel? I think of sale, 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 especially Christ the day after Christmas. You think of sale. Sale, sale, sale. Awesome. 
So when we talk about discount, we're really talking about sales. Mm -hmm. Let's just look at discount. And spending less. less. Spending less. All right. All right. So what is discount? Discount is a deduction from the usual cost of something. Exactly. So as you said, you're spending less. Mm -hmm. All right. Discount can be stated in different three ways. ways. Or in different ways, mm -hmm. I should say. It can be in dollar amount. So we can say you're getting $100 off. Or percentage, 25% off. Or a fraction. You're getting half off. But you know what, there are some key words too when we're thinking of discount mm -hmm. because maybe we won't necessarily only see discount. Right. So we want people to know that when these words pop up, it is still a discount. Yes. And these words would be like? Markdown. Right. Reduction. Cut. Deduction. Mm -hmm. Rebate. Look at that. And knock off. That's right. I like the knock off one. Yeah. No, you know, no, knock no. Knock off the price, man. Knock oh, off the price. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so there are various percentages that we can look at when we talk about discount. We'll look at some more. All right, so we just looked at discount. Let us apply this to this particular scenario. What is the best order? Kylan's graduation dress costs $7,000. Kylan can use two, cup, two coupons to get the best discounted price for the dress. Which order would save her the most money? You need to tell me why. I don't know what the coupons so are. So the coupons are save 10% or save $10. Mm, I would go with save $10 quick, quick, because as I look at it, save $10 and I'm excited. So I'll save my $10, which would be $6,000. So $7,000. And when I save my $10, my $10, it would be $6,990. Okay. Well. And then I go and try and figure out what my 10% is. is, which is mm. $690. That's what I would do. But why wouldn't you try to save $700 since 10% of $7,000 is $700? That's more. And then you can take the $10 off that afterwards. So basically, you want to find 10% of the large amo amount. More money. If you find 10% of more money, it's still going to be a bigger, a bigger cut. I a bigger discount. I from that angle, you know. So, Never did, but... I I'll would suggest to Kyle to use her save 10% first. first. Because in this instance, 10% is more than $10. It is, it is. Because 10% right. of our $7,000 is $700. Right. right. All right. So after she uses her 10%, she takes off her seven, they take off $700, then she can save $10 more. All, All right. right. Reasonable. Great. All right. So now that we get Kyle buying her dress. Let us look at this other activity. So Samson's father will be celebrating his 50th birthday in April. April is next month. There you go. He saved $9,500 for a gift. Samson decided to purchase a pair of shoes for his dad, so he went to Payful Shoe Store. When he arrived, he realized that they were having a sale of $420 of men's footwear. He saw a pair of black shoes with mm -hmm. a marked price of $5,500 and a pair of brown shoes with a marked price of $6,200. He is excited mm -hmm. and he wants to purchase both pairs of shoes. So the question is, can Samson purchase both pair of shoes? Does he have enough money for that? $9,500 is not money. money so don't it? I'm going to show you him can definitely... Show purchase me. Show those me two pairs of shoes. So watch now when us. Rough checking. Samson. It looks all right. How much we said Samson has again? He has $9,500. All right, $9,500, yes. right? The black shoes. The black shoes, so the pair of black shoes. It's marked at $5,500. $5,500. Right, and the brown shoes is $6,200. All right, mm -hmm. so you know what I'm going to do first? I, cause I think I'm going to get a whole heap of discount if I find my total, if I just right. add Figure my out. black shoe and my brown shoe, I put them together to find out how much money he would really spend. Go and ahead. then I use my coupon. All right, so here now we have, so the total that he would spend then 
is my five thousand mm -hmm. five hundred dollars plus your six my six thousand two hundred dollars, which would definitely give me mm -hmm. my eleven thousand seven hundred dollars. <throat> right, but I'm not finished yet. So, Samson is getting a discount. Of $420 uh -huh. of each footwear. That's right. So if it's each footwear and it's two pairs of shoes he wants to purchase, that's $420. Multiplied by two. I all right, you're going to add it. All fine, right, all right. Fine. Add it. So if I multiply it by two, you it's get the, the same, same as thing. adding by $420, right. which would be my $840. There you go. So right here now, you're getting a discount of $840. Yes. Check it from your total, because no, I can rough I'm, check I'm it. I'm going to let you know. So the total with discount mm -hmm. would be... Gives me my $11,700, and I'm subtracting my $840. Right. So this would give me, let me write 60. this a little bit better. Right. So our viewers can see us. So it's $840. So here we have now. Mm -hmm. And we know, I know everybody knows how to do their calculation. With already. their regrouping, right? Yes. So your thousand dollar, you know, you move it and you take out your eight hundred from it, right? So guess right? what? I'm so disappointed because I, I was telling you that it never, it, it never looked possible. Can't work. It can't. Cannot work because he's going to need to have ten thousand eight hundred sixty dollars, and he only has nine thousand five hundred. Can't work. So that means we have to go figure out. We're what probably we need going to have do. to get a little bit more money. Let's see if him can ask his cousin, James, to help him. What how much money we think he's going to need? Let's calculate that. So here we now have, so he now needs to have $10,860. How much we said he had again? $9,500. So when we work this out, this is what we arrive at. He yeah. needs $1,360. All right. So... That's one way we could definitely do it. So, so there's another way? Of course. Which if other they, way? They told us that there's $420 off each man footwear, men footwear, right? So, of course, we could, we know what Samsung has, 9500 We could take away the discount off each shoe. So, 420 from the 5500 And then... We, we would end up with $5,080. And then we could definitely take away the 420 from the 6,200, which gives us 5,780. So this will give us the two prices for the shoe with the discount taken off first. Oh, so you work it with the discount first. first right. right. And then I could pr probably have a better look at it because I know 9,500 is less than 10 grand. And if I look at my prices when I take off my discount, I see 5,080 up there and 5,780. Clearly, I don't have enough. Samson so you're don't have enough. Yes, man. Right? So when you combine, when you add these two prices for the black and the brown shoe, we get the same that you got, you know. Oh, because yes. of course you're going to get Ten, the same. I have to. All right. 10,860 is the total cost. Mm -hmm. And as you rightfully said, we have to examine what the total cost for both shoes with what Samson has. And clearly, Samson, we need to give Samson some money. Samson don't have enough. He's no, a pity, no. but maybe him can save some money in March this right. month. To or try him can buy it. one pair of shoes and buy father. No, Samson wants to buy his two pair of shoes. Leave Samson alone. All right. So Samson need to get $1,360 in order to purchase both shoes. Reasonable. All right. So we can look at another activity. Bailey went to the supermarket with her mother. While she was there, she noticed there was a special on snacks she loved. 
20% off the original price for cheese puffs, cheese balls, onion bits, and club social. Or if she spends a minimum of $500, she can receive a $150 discount. Bailey wants to know the better deal if she buys two cheese puffs, three cheese balls, two onion bits, and five club social. The unit prices of each item is seen in the table. Okay. So, we know Bailey wants to buy some snacks. There's 20% discount on all the snacks that she wants to buy. Right? So, what she needs to figure out, if the 20% is going to be greater than the 150. No. Let's see how we're going to do that. All right? So we have, she wants two, two cheese, cheese puffs, puffs, which is 80, 80 plus 80. $160. Right. Three cheese balls. And one 40. cheese ball was for $40. Right. So it's three multiplied by our $40 to give us $120. Right. And here we have two onion bits. And remember, one onion bit was, was $75. $75. And then she needs five club social and one club social, $25. $25. So five multiplied by $25 is $125. All right. Now, because there are two criteria here for her to get discount, she has to pay attention. If the money does not not make it to $500, she can't get the $150. No, she can't get that she $150 will just get the 20%. discount. No, no, right? no. Mm -hmm. But if it does go over $500, $500 or more, she can choose if she wants to use a 20% or the $500 contingency discount. Yes. Which of she can work with anyone. All right, so we total it. And look at that. $555. All right. But guess what? What if Bailey wants to know what, what would the 20% be? There you go. So 20% of $555 is $111. $111. You know, just looking at this. You can tell. I think, yeah, man, we can tell because if, when we look, you know, the total cost of all the snacks Bailey wants to purchase is more than $500. Exactly. And remember, we were told that if she spends five hundred, a minimum of $500, she will get a $150, $150 discount. discount. So, so looking at this, looking at that, twenty percent no, doesn't 20 look attractive right now. Twenty percent not working good for her. So right although here. We, we we can do the calculation, so she would pretty much be paying four hundred forty-four dollars. But we now realize that the one hundred and fifty is much more. So she will end up paying four hundred five dollars. So it's important when we go out there and we are consumers to pay attention to the discounts, to the things that's been offered to us. And with consumer arithmetic, we can definitely work out these things and make the best decisions. Yes. All right. So, sale tax. What is sale tax? Everything is tax, you know. Tax mm. on gas, tax on clothes, tax on food. So when I think of sales tax, I'm thinking of some tax. All right, then. All right. So when we purchase goods and services, there is a tax that is applied to some things. Not everything attracts, attracts tax. Well, let's look at it in a little bit more formal way. A sale tax is a consumption tax imposed by the government on the sales of goods and services. Jamaica requires 15% sale tax on various goods and services. All right. So maybe I'm just thinking... That means we have to pay tax then on everything. I, I made sure I put various, various oh, goods and services. Oh, oh, oh. So not everything will attract tax. And please remember, the tax is the government's money. So when our merchants collect the tax, it ought to go to the government. And when we pay tax as consumers, it is something that adds back to the development of our country. So let us look at our first activity. Well, the first activity that is about sales tax. But we are still doing activity, so we're looking at activity three, but it's right. the first activity for sales tax. Most definitely. So here we have Kim. What do we know about Kim now? 
So Kim is buying four taxable items at the supermarket priced $120, $300, $450, and $130. The prices are exclusive of tax. She is wondering if $1,000 is enough money for the four items or will she need more money? What do you think? Well, well, I'll have to check how much those things cost and then figure out if she's going to need more than $1,000. But hold on, we just spoke about tax. I don't hear you say anything about oh, tax. Oh, yes, the word, those words. That, yes, oh, so, so the prices know. are exclusive of tax. What really, what, what do you mean exclusive? What do you mean? Exclusive. So yes. we have exclusive and inclusive, right? Right, so exclusive of tax means... Most outside of tax. All right. Outside of and tax. Inclusive of tax in, means? That one includes the tax. Okay, so the, the tax would have been included already in the price so of what, the goods. So what you're saying then, that $120 does not have tax in it. No, no, it's plus tax. Oh. So you see, when you go to the stores, look carefully. If they have plus tax. Okay. And if you don't see plus tax, look if you see a large or a small. On a little price. Money, yes. <laughs> and then you will see this large money, you know. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering, oh, is that you're going to pay? Mm -mm. Pay attention. Look carefully if you see a small money. Smaller money. Otherwise, because okay. that one may include the tax and you so, have to be so careful. So what you're saying, some of those stores that we're shopping at, they have tax inclusive and they have, and some have tax exclusive. exclusive yes. So we All have right. to know what we're buying so whatever we're buying we need to know if it is inclusive of tax or exclusive of tax remember we said you know consumer arithmetic helps us to budget so if you're going to the cashier and you want to kind of estimate which i've been doing for for a while yes approximating, kudos. Kudos. right you pretty much want to know if the money that you're using to estimate your total bill is with tax or without, without tax. tax all right Great. so let us help kim figure this out all right, so Kim is at the supermarket and she has a few items that she wants to purchase. All right, so she has the items are costing $120, $300, $450, $130. When we total that, we get $1,000. Is this all Kim will be required to pay? <laughs> I know this. No, it's not. Okay. All right, I know this. Good job. We recall that the prices were exclusive of tax. Yes. So we're going to have to figure out what is the payable tax on $1,000. And we did say we're looking at 15% of the sales tax. Most so definitely. the sales tax here would have been 15%. Yes. So it would have been 15% of our $1,000, which is $150. Great. What is $150 Kim going to pay? No. She's going to now add the tax to the total of the items that she had picked up in her cart, trolley, whatever she was using. So now she's going to pay the $1,000 plus the $150, which is $1,150. All right. Reasonable. So Kim is going to need more than $1,000. Yes, she's definitely going to need more than the $1,000 that she went to the supermarket with. Maybe she has some more outside or in her purse or somewhere. Mm -hmm. So... All right, so we're on to activity four. Let's see what activity four is all about. <clears throat> so, and I think activity four should be talking about Chrissy. So yes. Chrissy is moving into a new house, right? Mm -hmm. So Chrissy is moving into the new house and she wants to purchase a toaster oven from Ports for $8,500 plus a sales tax of 15%. That's right. Chrissy wants to know the total cost of the toaster oven. Mm -hmm. So remember now, $8,500. Right. But there's a but. It there's is a sales tax. Plus 15%. Which is 15%. 15%, good. right. So we know that Chrissy, the cost of the oven. is $8,500. Yes. $8,500, uh -huh. right. and our sales taxes. Is 15% of that $8,500. All right, so now we need to find what is the sales tax of the toaster oven. Right. So the sales tax of toaster oven 
gives us our 15% of our 8,500 dollars. Correct. Now when I'm simplifying here, I'm left with my 85, and when I'm multiplying across, I get $1,275. Mm -hmm. So guess what? She can more than afford it. I finish $1,275, um, Chrissy, going to pay for but, that toaster mm, oven. Wow, that's very ambitious, but I am sure that ports want to collect the 8500 as well. Oh, yes, it's so not. Yes, oh, and she's yes, not just paying 15% off it. All she right. She 15% plus the cost. All right, so the cost of the toaster oven. Right. Plus. We want to use stats. total cost because you have cost up there as 8,005 already. Let us use total cost, great. Plus the sales tax. Right. Gives us our $8,500 uh -huh. plus our $1,275. And for those who may not be able to work it horizontally, let me try and put it vertically for us. So here goes. $9,775. That is what she is required to pay no, in total. It's a pity it wasn't $8,500. Maybe she can get a discount. Inclusive of well, tax. That would have been nice. And as you rightly said, maybe she can get maybe a discount. Maybe she can get a discount. You never know. Oh, you worked it out as well. Yes, I... man, I did. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So we have 15% of it as what you did. And then you realize that it is what you said $1,275. And you would combine the $8,500 with the $1,275, and we would have gotten $9,775 for the toaster, toaster oven from ports, and she would have been able to afford it if she had at least 10 grand. All right, <laughs> all right. All right. So we looked at discount, we looked at sales tax, and right. now we're looking at profit. Most definitely. So let's run straight into profit. So right. profit. And we know, when you start a business, when you're selling, buying, when you're selling, let's start with selling. You All want right. to make a profit. There you go. What is that profit? So the profit is seen as an increase or gain. If you trade an item at a higher price than it cost you, mm -hmm. then you would have made a profit. When the income is greater than the expenses, there is a profit. All right, so let us look at this illustration. You can see it, I mean, just to let you look at what profit is. Income, whole per money, expenses, little bit of money. So clearly, the profit is there. There, see? yes. So expense, income is greater than expenses. Expenses, yes. So since you look at profit, what happens if, if your business is not making the money? We spoke about this earlier. Yeah, we did. We're at a loss. Yes. So what if your expenses are greater than your income? Then you have a loss. Loss is seen as a decrease. When a trade occurs and you receive less than you paid for the item, you experience a loss. And we spoke about your watch. I don't even go back down that line about you with three hundred dollars. No, right. no, no. All right, but that would have been a loss. Yes, yes that would have been a loss. All right. So we know profit, we know loss now. All right. So let's see if we're really following. All right. So Mark purchased. So Mark purchased some mangoes and sold them for. A lot, a lot of money. No, no money. No money. Mm -hmm. He told his friends that he made a profit and they should try it. Do you think his friends should follow his advice? So think about it. Well, I don't even know what Mark buy the mango them for. What is a lot of money? No money. I have to tell you. How we know that Mark make a profit? How man we make a profit? Come on. Believe me, man. Take my word well, for it. No money. Let me answer the question. Do you think his friends should follow his advice, of, not with this information. Of course, definitely. No, no, I think Mark needs to tell me some more things. What should Mark tell you? Let, let, let's talk to Mark. So Mark. After talking to Mark, okay. Mark said he paid $1,000 for 10 mangoes and sold one mango for $200. No, Mark, making sense. No, we can, we can do some calculations here. So if Mark basically bought them for what, $1,000? $1,000 for 10 mangoes. And it's 10 right. mangoes. So we can figure out how much you pay for one mango. So we know that Mark would have spent $100. $100. And he sold it for $200, Mark, and make money. Double it? I tell you. Double. 
So I need to meet Mark I in think real so too. life. <laughs> so I can definitely tell Mark friends that they can try this. They yeah, can try. They it. can. Hopefully the mango them good and people them still want mango. Yeah, man. <laughs> they, they, they can. Right. So selling at $200 each is a 100% profit, profit, which we know double the money. Yeah, man. Mark, right. Mark, Mark, I make money out there. Mark is a smart boy. Mm -hmm. All right. So here goes now. So now we're looking at a bakery, right? Yes. And a bakery made $25,000 one week. Mm -hmm. They paid the workers $8,000. Electricity cost $2,000 and other expenses amounted to $3,000. But what, are we, what do we need to know now about the bakery? So we know how much money is made. We know how much is going out. And right. What, this, these monies that are going out, what we call them again? We call them expenses, all man. Right. We call, we call, we call, in Jamaica, we call them bills. Bills, bills, bills. bills, bills. So they're expenses. Yes. Right. So the question is, was this a profitable week? Could we say it was a good week? So let's, let, let's, let's look at what is happening first. We can't first. just look at it like this and say, it make 25 grand, we're not business about anything else. The man well, make money. You know, oh, that's, and you know, you're so right. A lot of times, people think that just looking at your income and it says, yeah, man, we make whole lot of money this week, but that's not sufficient. When you look at consumer arithmetic, you have to look at how much you're spending or how much you're what you, you said it, going out. Yes, how much going out. how much is coming, coming in. in. So we made 25000 but out of that 25000 I have to pay the workers $8,000. I have to pay electricity for two and other expenses. So Three. electricity is what I $2,000. Yes, mm -hmm. man. And other expenses? Oh, yes. $3,000. All so, right. So in all, we, we're doing some good expenses here right now, you know. So our income is $25,000. $25, now let us look at our total expenses. So $8,000 mm -hmm. plus our $2,000 plus our $3,000, which is $13,000. No, you say so you don't really make $25,000? No, but at least I make something. Well, see. Mm -hmm. No, in business, we need to subtract our expenses from our income to tell us really and truly what our profit is. So, if we could subtract $13,000 from $25,000, we would end up with $12,000. This means it was a profitable week. We made a profit, right? Because the income is greater than the expenses. But the other part of the question was... Was this a great week? No. Of course it was. We can't tell that. Of course. No, sir. They made $12,000. But we don't know what the other weeks looked like. Okay, well, that's, that's true. So we really don't have enough information. Exactly. To make such a claim. Exactly. So we would have to, as you rightly said, look at the income and expenses of other weeks. Because exactly. guess what? Maybe the previous week they maybe would have made... Maybe is a small amount yes, of money. Yes, and maybe... Weeks you know? before, exactly. five, six, seven weeks before, I'm the in hundred and twenty thousand dollars, or maybe they would have been making even five thousand dollars, you know, and the expenses are still more than the income. So you exactly. know what will they take could have place? been making a loss. A loss will be taking or place. Operating at a loss. Yes, you, you can't really make a loss. No, can't You're make a lose. loss. We can make a profit, but but you operate at, at a, a loss. loss. All right. So it's important to know how so expenses look, and mm -hmm. income relate to each other. So we know about profit. Right. We have some idea. So let's just repeat that. Loss. Our profit, when do we make a profit again? When, when we gain. When we gain. Yes. So when our expenses are less than our income. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Good. So now when you gain. Exactly. But we have to know when we gain. We have to have more money coming in okay. than going out. All right. There and you go. We lose. What, what, what you said? When you lose now is when your expenses are greater than your income. All so right. you have less coming in, more going out. I need to know these things. So when I start in my business, you, you know, know so I say. know that right. if when I look, things not working right, I'm making, well, I'm at a loss. Or you so can adjust your selling yes, price. Yes, I need to. So you can make a profit. Make a profit. There you go. Sounds reasonable. So here goes. Right. So we are here and now we're taking a look at who is benefiting from this trade. Yes. Right? So Let's just look. Charles purchased 10 calculators from the wholesale for $550.50 each. Mm -hmm. He sold them to Kerry for $5. Hundred dollars. Well, Kerry 
took all 10 of them for 5,000. Well, yeah, yes, I guess you work it out, right? Yeah, man. It's $500 for one. Mm -hmm. So what's the price? He sold Kerry a good price. For Kerry? It was for Kerry? It was for Kerry. Because Kerry sure? benefits, of course. Kerry has benefited. He, he purchased the, the calculators for $550.50. And, 50 50 cents. Cents. and he sold them cheaper. So Kerry don't, Kerry, if Kerry went to the wholesale, she would have paid $550.50. Boy, so she he's only up paid, a at a loss? Yes, man. He never think this through. Because he spent more money. To purchase the 10 calculators. And he's at a loss of $500. Him clearly he just frightened by the $5,000 bill and say, yeah, man, good price. But he did not check this. So as we said before, if you're operating any form of business, any form of trade, you have to know your unit price, your cost price for the item before you decide what you're going to sell it for. You know what comes to mind too? It was the other day I heard this young man and he was selling some marinas. So he mm -hmm. said, give me $100 for three, but $30 for one. I'm like, hold on. I must buy three marinas for, for $100. $100. And I'm selling one for $30. Might as well I go buy the, the three, three marinas individually. individually. And I will make my, t I'll save my $10, exactly. you know. Exactly. Not at all. So mm -mm. We have to pay attention. We so have to. right here we see that Charles wasn't, Charles wasn't paying attention. Charles made an error there. Mm -hmm. So Charles clearly need to adjust this price. We've looked at discount. discount. Profit, tax, profit, mm -hmm. loss, cost price, cost price, selling price. So now we're going to take a look at expressing these as an exp as a percentage, percentage. Mm -hmm. of some value. Of some value. All right. What's our first activity? So here we have Maxine purchased a dress on sale for four thousand five hundred dollars from its original selling price of six thousand dollars. What was the percentage discount Maxine received? And okay. clearly. We can see that she would have received some a discount. discount. Right. She paid four thousand five hundred dollars for a dress that originally cost six thousand dollars. Right. How so, do we find out the percentage though? But before we can find out the percentage, don't we need to know what that discount would have been? We could. That's one way. So yes, yes, most definitely. So we want to figure out what is the difference with four thousand five, four thousand five hundred and, and six thousand dollars. All right. right. So let's take a look. Sure. And we hope they are following us at home. We hope so. Too. So here goes. So this is one way as you were sharing right. first that we could have had four thousand five hundred dollars, which is the discounted price she paid. The six thousand dollars, which is how much it was originally being sold right. for. And remember, we are doing what? Percentages and yes. percentages out of 100. So here we have multiplied by 100 to have given us 75%. But guess what? What does what that is, mean, 75%? That's what I'm asking you. Okay, so, so you it, really means, me. it really means she paid 75% of the original cost. So what is that 75% of the Seven, original? $4,500 is 75% of... $6,000. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So we can subtract the 75% from the 100, giving us 25%. Yes. So we know that what was not paid was 25%. 25%. So she got a 25% discount. All right, and guess what? We can look at it, what I was thinking. Right. Just so subtract. You can subtract Because I want to know the discount money. I right. don't want to look at percentage That's right now. That's fine. No. You can take it that route. That's what I want to do. And here we have, when we find a difference between how much it was actually sold for and how much she actually purchased it for. Right. She has a difference of $1,500. And it's the same procedure. So you that want to figure out at. what is $1,500 of $6,000. Which was the original selling price. Yes. And Which again, we're looking at 100. 25%. Yes. So it still lines up with the method that I would have chosen to use. Fine. I give it to you, you know, I give it to you. So we can look at it from both Either angles. Yes. So 1500 So $1,500 off is the 25 same as? 25% off. There yes. you go. So let's take another look here at another activity. So Naron sold a phone for $30,000 exclusive of tax. And we know that word. 
exclusive. Exclusive. Tax is not in it. Inclusive, exclusive. We know that word and now we're looking at exclusive. Like you rightly said, not tax, not included. Right. So the final cost for the phone was $37,500. Question to you, is the tax included in this $37,500? Of course. It's more than $30,000 and it says the final cost. All right. You're paying attention. Yes. All right. What percentage tax was paid on the phone? How do you think you would figure this one out? Well, I would find out what is Okay, I think I'd use your method. All right. Yes, I would subtract my 30,000 from the 37,500, giving me $7,500. And then I would find out what percentage of the 30,000 is $7,500. All right. And that and gave me 25%. But well, we have a question. Mm. Did you know that phones and their accessories attract a 25%? Yes, tax. I did. You did? Yes. All right. I hope we all know yes, that. Yes, because, you know, a phone card, a $100 phone card cost $125. It still costs so much? I think so. Oh, okay. No, it's not. Yes, it does. Of course. It does. It's the same 25 The GCT okay. is just for other items. All right. Yes, it does. All right. So guess what? No. We're just, we're taking a look at some CSA questions, mm -hmm. but we're not going to do them. We want them to look at them. To see how to home. approach them. Yes, so we have one on the board. We're going to read it and give them some seconds to write them off. So Paul bought and sold a computer. He wrote his business activity as follows. Cost price for a computer, $1,064. Marked price of computer, $1,399. Discount on marked price if paid, paid by, by cash, 5%. And we're asked, one, calculate the selling price. Two, the profit or loss as a percentage of the cost price. So we're giving them some five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> for them to take it down. They can even right. take a photo of it, right? Let's look at the second CSEC question. Mrs. Jack bought 150 t-shirts for $1,920 from a factory. One, calculate the cost of one t-shirt. The t-shirts are sold at $19.99 and 99 cents each. Just give them a little idea. What would they do to find the cost? They calculate the cost of one t-shirt though. They're going to need to, they know the cost of the 150 t-shirts, which is $1,920. They know the cost of one. So they need to divide okay. to find how much So they for bought one. 150 t-shirts for that money. So if they divide it by 150, they can get that unit price. Yes. Okay. All right. And they need to calculate the amount of money Mrs. Jack received after selling all of the t-shirts. The two... Well, three, the right. total profit made, and four, the profit made as a percentage of the cost price, giving your answers correct to the nearest, nearest whole number. And the final CSA question is, the table below, and we're looking at the table here, shows Pamela's shopping bill. Some of the information was not included. Mm -hmm. And here we're hoping they can take the little screenshot here. And go and apply all that we would have done today to figure out what is X, Y, and Z. So we are now at our summary, where we have the cost price, the amount of money that you pay for an article or service, right. also referred to as our original price or, or buying price. Selling price, the price that an article or service is sold for. Selling price is equal to the cost price plus profit. Your selling price can also equal to your cost price. Subtract the loss. And the discount deduction from the usual cost of something. Yes. And finally, we looked at profit. Is seen as an increase or gain. Loss is seen as a decrease. <laughs>